Oh, okay, I'll see you. I'll see you. All right, cool. Clavis. Hello. Oh, hey. How are you What's doing? Happening? Long time no see, bro. How's the little one? Very, very good. Oh, I got to tell you, they're growing up too quick, man. Oh, tell me about it, bro. Is it, is it all the white hairs there, then? That, you, exactly. <laughs> I know the that's feeling. Not known, but yeah. I, that's why I had to shave my head off. <laughs> but dude, anyway, man, come. Let's, yeah, let's yeah, walk, let's you know, walk. let's go. I think the last time we saw each other was uh, back in uh, Brainiacs, right? Yes, it has been. Oh, and we now had look such at this. We're back in Christmas time now, you know, so many months. We have chose past. the right festive season to it's get back is. together, hasn't it? it? Look at the lights, is. it's just so amazing. I mean, they look brilliant, don't they? I mean, like, look at that, yeah? Honestly, it's such a. Christmas time does bring such an amazing feeling, right? Sometimes I wish Eid feels a bit like this as well. Exactly. Our Eids are, I'm, I'm gonna say, they're a bit dull ish. I mean, we just go to the mosque, we pray, yeah. but look at what's happening around us. It's like a whole festive, jolly atmosphere. Look, just these lights alone, yeah, they bring on such an amazing feeling, yeah? And it's new every year, yes. so it's not like it doesn't get old. No, it doesn't. That is amazing. Do you know, that would make an amazing Secret Santa gift, that hat. Yeah, but uh, the budget for this year is only 10 pounds. That's 30 quid. I'm not spending extra 20 pounds on it. I know, but come on, it's a season for giving, yeah? And if we can't give now, when are we going to give? Eat? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Christmas morning as a kid, I used to get up, go downstairs, watch the TV, all right? And the first thing we used to watch, it's not Christmas until you watch The Snowman. How amazing is that? The way it's all going round. And look at the conveyor belt. That's what I really like, when it, when it just kind of transfers into those boxes there. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Cool. That is brilliant, right? Yeah. And those shoes are pretty decent, though. Forget the shoes, that blazer is pretty sick. Look at that. Ooh. Blazer is awesome. I think I can Proper. really, you know, well, Proper. I like to say I can, but let's see. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe then. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's go see the others. Yeah. Is it just pricey because it's like no, it's the, all organic the stuff area? Though. Okay, okay. I wonder what that's all about. Are we allowed to touch? I don't oh, know. Look, you touch, you buy. You can break, but you can touch. Okay. Oh, oh, he cheated. But bro, it's chocolate. You have to eat it. Eat it. It's pretty much like compulsory. I would say it's wajib, man, to eat that. Without a doubt, you know? I'm actually feeling something right now, but there's a glass in front of me. <laughs> Where's your coat, man? I uh, left it at home. I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't going to rain today. Christmas, it's either going to be snowing or, or it's going to be raining. One of the two, right? It's a cuddly teddy bear dressed like a man and a well-dressed man. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Like, look at that suit. Oh, it's better, better dressed than I am. <laughs> better dressed than me, same here. This is brilliant, man. It's actually decorated really nicely. If you look, there's like 10 trees. They've turned it into one big fat Christmas yeah. tree. Pretty amazing, actually. It is brilliant. I think it's really creative how it's somebody done that. different lights there attached. Um, the, the the wingspan that's different. Yeah. But the one in the back is. Uh, anyway, it's quite nice. Bro, I've got <laughs> I've got to ask you though. Yeah. What's up? Do you celebrate Christmas? Oh, uh, you have to ask me that. I do have to ask you that. Um, what do you mean? Like that's such like, a deep question. For if you example, think about it. do you uh, partake in? like trees, gifts for the kids, decorating, joining uh, everyone for uh, Christmas lunch. To be honest, I mean, is that even like a need? Is there a need to do that? Is there well, a requirement there to do is, that? Bro. Just because, of course like, is. why? Everyone is, why? everyone is off, yeah? Okay, there's one day in the year everyone gets off that you can spend together. I mean, we always get together, yeah. And I mean, if somebody wants to exchange gifts, it's absolutely fine. But, but what you're you... saying, set up the tree, uh, decorate yeah. it with the kids and everything, do the stocking yeah. and everything, yeah. and, and dress up as Santa. No, I don't think um, I've actually done that before. Before. Uh, I don't you know haven't. how I feel about that. Dude, it's amazing. Have you done it before? Well, yeah, I, I've dressed up as Santa for my uh, daughter's nursery, okay. uh, for an old people's home as well. Oh, wow. And it's amazing, yeah, we share gifts as well. But one thing I haven't done is I haven't actually ever bought a tree uh, in my house. Okay. You know what? I've got an idea. Tell me. Tomorrow, I'm going to go buy my first ever Christmas tree. Okay. Why don't you come with me? Uh, you, want, you want me to come with you? Let's do it, bro. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. All right, done. All right. Let's get it done. Get it's going to be an experience and a half. Without a doubt, man. Yes. And we can then bring the Christmas festivities. Can we buy it now?
Bro, oh, I'm a little bit nervous actually, so I'm gonna let you lead. Why are you nervous? I've never uh, entered a compound with so many trees before. You yeah, saw like I... entering the lines then, though, it's just a Christmas tree. I know, I mean, but look at all this stuff. What if we ask the really silly questions and stuff and they're like, these guys don't know what they're Yeah, but we ask silly questions when we were getting married, don't forget. We survived let's that. Let's, let's do this <laughs> Let's now. do this, right? Whoa, look at all these trees, man. What are those things? I don't know, but they're big, some of these ones around here. Yeah. But what actually does make a good tree? I mean, Pika Abyss. Man, I don't know half of these names. Bro, yet, I'm honestly. glad you pronounced it, but you know, it also said that there's like a full range of sizes. Yeah. So there's Pika Abyss. Oh, you know what, what, what? Do you think this would make a good Christmas tree? I really Wait, should have yeah. researched it. Uh, hey, yes, hi. How you doing, mate? I'm all right, thanks. How are you? Oh, shit, not bad. You know, a bit wet and windy, but apart from that, all good. <laughs> So basically, look, this is the first time that I'm ever, ever buying a Christmas tree. Okay. I have no idea what I'm looking for. Yep. And I'm going to ask you a lot of dumb questions as well. Yeah, yeah. So bear with me on this, right, okay? So what makes a good Christmas tree? Well, it depends on personal preference, really. There's four types uh -huh. of tree. There's like the value ones, which are a bit more price sensitive. And then you've got the Frasers, which are the most expensive, and they smell great. Okay. So it really depends on what you're kind of looking for. And then also the height. The height as well. Yeah. Wow, okay. So I want something this big. Okay, that's about four foot then, yeah? Four, four foot. five foot. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, we're right in the four foot section, actually. Okay. So this is how it looks. Kind of standing up. Wow, okay. Quite big at the bottom. Tends to be a bit narrower at the top. Will okay. it shed? I know those are not leaves, but what do you call them? Uh, well, non-drop, they're, they're technically called pines. Mm. Pines, pines. okay, needles. right. Yeah. Okay. I knew that. So what else do you have that's comparable to this? Um, well, nothing. They're, they're all quite individual in the trees, the four different trees we have. Right. I can show you another tree if you like. Yeah, that'd be brilliant, definitely. Oh, my uh, days. These are pretty big. Those are massive, yeah, man. Space to get in there. Yo, these are even bigger than you. I mean, both of us combined. Anything is bigger than me, bro. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Dude, that looks heavy. It's heavy, mate. Whoa. Here, here's a question for you. Can Christmas trees kill people? <laughs> well, maybe this one could, it fell over. But well, yeah, that's too big. Yeah. If you have a big house, yeah. this is the one. Wow, so how, how many lights would I need for something like that? I need about 500 lights. Ooh. Yeah. At least. Yeah, let's, yeah, get let's go one. this way. <laughs> yeah. So you can see the smaller tree, yeah? Yeah, definitely. I think let's have another look at the smaller tree. Couldn't you like have picked a better day to go tree shopping? Yo, man, my, my hair is getting all wet. So this is the one. That's the one that I want. Done, that's we'll one. take it. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's get out of this rain then, innit? Yeah, let's take this one. All right, lead the way, my friend. My first Christmas tree. Okay, so what are you doing now? You're going to wrap it up? Yeah, first? I'm going to put it in a, in a wrap. And that stops Whoa. everything falling out. Brilliant. Dude, that's, look at that, that's awesome. No need for any other machinery or anything like that. That's pretty cool. That's your tree. Brilliant, thank you. All right, guys, Cheers, thanks. See ya. Get out of the rain. Thanks very much. <laughs> Quick, uh, bro, I, keys, I'm going to get how are we going to get this on there? Basically, if you put it on and we just attach it All right. side by side, we can do it. Hopefully, it's not yeah. that difficult. <sighs> Here, you get one end of the rope. How's that? Yeah, that should do. Yeah? Yeah, that let's, looks good. Let's make a move. All right. That was right, you know. That was brilliant. Do you need any help setting it up? Um, I think I should be OK. Just need help getting in the house. But it's so good, man, for all you guys to come around, you know? It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. How's the work been anyway? It's been good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah not bad, man. Oh, it's, crack, crack crack. it's been uh, really good as well. You don't seem to think it's been going good. You've been in trouble, haven't you? Basically, yeah. there's a lot going on. Yeah. And um, just trying to sift through stuff because it's, it's the end of the year. Yeah. So this is when we have to kind of report back to our heads and kind of explain how we spent the budget and all that. But, you know, why, why are you talking about work, man? No, because I was saying, the reason why I was saying is because obviously it's the time of the year, as I say. Yeah. With Christmas is coming up, you can ah. see, I even noticed in this room, you can see the whole Christmas tree. I mean, what's wrong with the decoration? Yeah, um, oh. MJ, what's up with the Christmas tree? It's brilliant. Hang on, what's wrong with the decorations? I don't know, I just feel like it's too much. But it's all right. It's, I, I like it's it. It's too much, but it's, it's all right. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Listen, Listen, I'll be no, honest. Cat's you know, out of the bag. You need to. Yeah. yeah. As you guys know, I've <laughs> never ever like put up a tree ever before, you know, but this year I thought, you know what? I'm going to go go a bit further out, you know, just go out on a limb, get the decorations out, put the tree up as well. I mean, I'll be honest, the kids, bruv, they were well excited about all of this, right? And one thing I've realized, putting up the Christmas tree and the decorations is really hard work. I like had to do this every single year. I don't know if I could do it, you know? But we, like when I was a kid, we used to do it like as a family and like it really brought us together. 
I used to love doing so you it. You do it every year. Yeah, yeah. Every year we used to buy a Christmas tree. Well, actually, my mom actually bought a plastic one, but <laughs> okay. what, sometimes we'll buy a real one, and it was so much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, as a kid, yeah, really, I ever bought one Christmas tree, right? Oh. And my dad like basically one of those decorated. tiny ones. No, no, it was actually a proper one, right? It was a proper one, plastic, proper one, like about sort of three foot okay. or something. And my dad, he actually decorated it with the names of the imams, oh, wow. some of the oh, prophets, wow. oh, you know, wow. and all that stuff, right? Wow. And instead of presents, we actually had Eid under there. <laughs> so we had to keep part of the tradition together. But obviously growing up, you know, I, I thought, okay, you know, yeah, not going to celebrate Christmas and that. But when I got married, sort of got more into it. And I'll be honest, man, but see, I love I, this time of year. Well, I find it a problem. Like, I feel like sometimes we celebrate Christmas more than our own, like, religious holidays. Like Eid is supposed yeah. to be... It's not as much of a big thing, big thing. It's a big thing. Come from the grandma, grandma, please. Are you blushing now? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> but I love Christmas, like, and I don't speak of it as passionately about things like Eid, for example. You're right, though. But think about it, bro. We're living in a Western country. Yeah? It's a non-Islamic country. So when it comes to Eid, we're not really going to be making a big deal out of it. Number one. Number two, on Eid, yeah, bro. If we can decide what day Eid actually is. Yeah, we may be able to get a day off, right? Thirdly, if you go back home, right, okay, for example, Iraq, Pakistan, Africa, yeah, dude, they do a lot for Eid, yeah, like in Mashhad, right, over Eid. Uh, I remember when I went to Mashhad one year for Eid al-Ghadir. Dude, the entire streets here were like Oxford Street. You know where we went, yeah? Yes, to yes. Oxford Street um, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. It was exactly like that down there, you know, just the lights out and everything. So you've got to look at where you are. I've been I wanting to go. To be honest, I haven't experienced anything like that. And I totally reflect on what you're saying. We need more. We need our Eids to be more Christmassy. If that actually if that actually makes sense. More festive, more joy, more of that holiday cheer. Look, I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to get it out of, of, of the bag oh, right no. now. Oh, no. I think the whole festive period surrounding Christmas is amazing. It's tremendous. Yeah. Um, everybody, almost everybody except you, you get in, is getting in <laughs> on it. Um, workplaces, decorating. Um, streets are filled with lights. I mean, even the villages yeah. are decorating their roads and everything. And uh, the festive drinks. Like, Come on, yeah, I know yeah. you coffee lovers out there. <laughs> yeah. So um, this festive period, uh, everybody tends to kind of wind down. Just before yeah. the last bits. Before and my the sale of the real Christmas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. Cool. I like that. I like that. So my manager's <laughs> like, um, just work on these like two, three mini projects that you have open right now. Okay. And all the big ones, toss them over to next year. And there was many, you know, projects. No, 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 and I was that, so happy so to hear that. You guys can charge uh, your clients more. <laughs> whatever, whatever the reason is, obviously. <laughs> and and why, did, why did our heads do this is because of this. Yeah winding down, relaxing, uh, chillaxing, sort of. Because everybody, all the other departments are going to be busy as well. Or yeah. Busy or winding down, going on leave, etc. That's what I really like. Another element of Christmas so what I you're really, saying really is like. You like. The reason you like Christmas is because you don't have to do work. Uh, yes, but it's also, yes, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> but it's like a wind up. For the, it for is. The next it is the whole year, year everybody, the, the hard work that everybody's put in over the whole year, this is like a, a legitimate excuse for them to just pause, but you say take it excuse, easy. But it's more just like a celebration for the end of the a year. A celebration, you can yeah, celebrate anything. It's like, it's like a reward. Yeah, I, li I like that. For the whole. A celebration towards, for the end of the year. And it's really important though. Look, think about workplace. Yeah, it helps with morale. Okay, allows you as a person to just relax a bit as well, get ready for the sales, you know. And let's be honest, right, okay, if you turn around and say, I don't celebrate Christmas because I ain't Christian, well, why do you take part in the sales then? Fair point. Exactly. exactly. You see what I mean? Okay, hold on, hold on. Issues. I've got a counter-argument. Go what on. about when you send people Christmas cards or even just saying yeah. Merry Christmas? What does Christmas actually symbolise? You're essentially congratulating them on the birth of Jesus or Nabi Isa. Yeah. But we don't believe that this is the time of his birth. You're right. And nor you know, do we necessarily always celebrate it. You're very true. At the same time, okay, I don't know about you guys, but I'm now so many years old, and over those so many years, I have seen, uh, yeah, and let's, let's not get into that, right? But I have seen a massive transition, yeah? Let's take Ramzan, for example. As a kid, all right, at school, I used to fast. And what kids used to do back then is like, ah, I've got some food, na 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 na, all right? And that really used to hurt, right? But as time has Still gone hurts. on, as years have gone on, people have got to understand what Islam is, who Muslims are, okay? And now, okay, over Ramzan or when it's Eid, I get Christian people, atheist people, Hindu people, Sikh people, some Jewish brethren that turn around and say, Eid Mubarak. Yeah. Do they believe in Ramzan? Do they believe in Allah? Do they believe in the Prophet? No. 
But what it is doing is it's allowing us to integrate together. Because let's be straight, okay? The world is getting smaller, isn't it? Yeah? Because of the interweb, all right? It's getting a lot smaller. We're getting to know more about different cultures and that. And we're integrating. And what's the first thing that we're taught as Muslims? Integrate. Whichever country you're in, okay? Be nice to your neighbors, you know, take care of your neighbors up to 40 places, right? So if we turn around, yeah, walk down the street saying, mate, I celebrate Christmas, mate, I don't believe in it. Bro, what are we doing then? Are we really being good Muslims then? You know, if by you saying Merry Christmas to someone, or if you want to be politically correct, Happy Holidays, all right? Yeah. And you give somebody that um, joy, or you start a conversation with somebody, is that not a bad thing? Is that not a good thing? I think you're right, because if a Jewish guy or a Christian guy came up to me and said, Happy Eid. I don't feel like he's validating like my reason of celebrating. Exactly. I don't think he believe. I know that he doesn't. I feel like he knows. I don't. Mm. He doesn't celebrate it. So when he says it to me, I kind of get like, yeah, that's nice. At least you know. It makes you feel nice. That look. At least you. So I think it's the opposite for us as well. When we say it to them, yeah. When we say it to them, but when we say it to Christians, for instance, um, have Merry Christmas. I don't think we kind of validate the reasoning for it. They know that we're Muslims. Per se. Exactly. So let's look at atheists, for example. Okay, atheists don't believe in a god. Nothing at all, right? But they still celebrate Christmas. They go out there, they put up the trees, you know, they get the presents, decorate the houses as well. Why? It's jokes to them. I have a colleague, I asked him, he's like, I'm like, do you believe in Christmas? Do you do it because of the religious element? He almost laughed. And he's like, yeah. no, because uh, my parents invite me over and they make food for me. So I go and just chill with my family. Exactly. And I it's say, it means nothing. Together. It means nothing. And there's another colleague of mine yeah. who actually goes away around this period, literally just goes, you know, to a different country and just travels because he doesn't care for, for, for Christmas. And I, and I think that helps maybe me and maybe perhaps the other Muslims where we can easily say Merry Christmas because it's, we're celebrating the time, not necessarily the birth, not necessarily yeah. Christ, how the Christian community deems Christ to be. Yeah. You know, because we have it's a different exactly understanding of Christ. Like midnight mass or anything, right? I mean, but where do you draw the line? Did you go? No, but where do you draw the line? Even if I, well, I don't. I used to go actually. I used to. Used to go. go. I used to. Interesting. Go, um, back in Sweden when I was a kid, because we had to go during school time. We had I used to, to take part in the plays in the yeah. Lucia plays. But the question is, yeah. where do we? I mean, now that I've grown up, I've kind of looked into it, kind of left, right, and see do what's right and wrong. But where do you draw the line? Because, like, would you send your kids, for those of you who have some, uh, would you send your kids to all these plays? Like, at school, I know they, yeah. they have these. You yeah, know. of course. My, my daughter's playing an angel in this year's nativity play. But it contradicts some of the things that we believe in. But it's part of the spirit of it, okay? It's part of integration. It's part of the school. Well, how do you think a child would feel? Hang on a second. Sorry, I know you, you want to no, no, that's, that's fine. But seriously, yeah? How would you feel right now, okay? As if I thought we're sitting here, okay? And I said, no, listen, Rani, just go sit over there, please, yeah? Because you're not know, part of this discussion. But you wouldn't. You know, you're not know, part of the circle. That's exactly how a child would feel, yeah? How would I explain to my daughter that, listen, you're not going to be in this play because we're Muslims? Straight away, what's she going to think? Muslims don't integrate. Number one. Number two, all right? It's only a play, okay? It's teaching the kids skills, all right? On how to, for example, control emotions, whatever the skills are that they learn in a play. Memorizing a line. Any line that she's got to say is helping her with her memory. And it's fun. So she's creating a memory with her friends. So the next day, she'll be with her friends saying, that was a fun time, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? Okay, but on this children note okay. and uh, celebrating Christmas plays, would you allow your child to partake in a activity called Christ Tingle or Chris Tingle? I don't know how to say it. Oh, you guys heard of it? What you guys doing in Pakistan? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that you ever use the word tingle in Pakistan. So it definitely is not Pakistani. Not in that context anyway. Have you, have you heard of this? No, what is So that? the light of Christ. So basically kids get an orange and they decorate that oh orange. God, this is the new one. They put a candle because that represents the light of Christ. And I recently found out about this. I also didn't know what it was. Okay. Maybe it's in, I thought it was maybe in Sweden okay. or something. Let, they do something let, like let this. Let me ask you guys, okay? Who's gone to school in the UK? Middle uh, school, year yeah. Nine. Year nine, year yeah. Nine, okay, no, like, I'm talking middle school before, uh, yeah. yeah? Okay. Did we used to sing uh, songs in assembly? Yeah, 100%. And how many of those songs were hymns? All, pretty much all of them. Pretty much all of them, right, okay? So are you telling me, yeah, that you would tell your kid to keep quiet, no, I'm I not singing a song hymns like are, that. Hymns are fine. I'm talking but about again, Chris Tingle. Exact, but again, it's the same thing. You're singing, okay, about the birth of the Son of God that we don't believe in, right? And hear me up. You're, you're singing about the birth of son, uh, God's Son. You're singing about it. But yet you're telling me that you can't decorate an orange? But when you say silent night, uh, you can't really tell you're singing about... Holy night? 
Mm. Yeah, but the kids, we don't, but we don't know. They could, you know, Holy Night could be Laila to the Holy I don't know. <laughs> it's a Holy yeah, Night. Papa, Papa Eid coming on. <laughs> what you're doing is you're telling, so what you're saying is, okay, so you touched upon the, your son or your daughter maybe yeah. memorizing a word, right? Uh, or mem- helping them memorize or helping them you know, take part or stuff like that. But you can do that outside of Christmas, like every day. <laughs> they do. You I mean, they, 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 they definitely do. Whenever That's a, a good the point. Person, okay, they have uh, plays or anything like that. They're always there, right? Okay. Any Quran competition, du'a, surah yeah, competition. Yeah, but you do that in Quran there. competition as well. So why necessarily? Because yeah. when the right, I remember it, right? So yeah. there was certain times in during Christmas uh-huh. um, at school when my dad said, I'll oh, take a day off. And I was more happy as a kid to take, take a day, day off yeah. to go to school. <laughs> So I didn't necessarily bother whether it was Christmas or not, or whether to take part of this. I didn't feel like an outsider um, if I didn't take part of the whole play like I always used to do. There's always been occasions during some years where my dad said, take a day off. And I'm like, yeah, why not? Because I think even then he knew that if I take too much part into it, I would think that it's part of my Islam kind of thing. That's a very good point. uh, Very good point. But at the same time, this comes down to us as parents to be able to explain to our kids. For example, last year, uh, my son's school, his year, uh, was invited to go uh, just local here to the Pinna High Street, right, to do uh, Christmas carols. Yeah, mm-hmm. I took him. Yeah, I sat down with him. We rehearsed it as well. Now, what we did, okay, is uh, because, you know, I recite a lot. Okay, no has mercy has all that right, okay. So me and uh, Ibrahim we, we do a lot of recitation practice together, all right? So while we're reciting, okay, Ibrahim goes, Daddy, but we're singing songs right now, it's not a no I said, Yeah, Ibrahim, we are, you know. But the thing is that, you know, how do you feel about it? He goes, Well, it's music, so I don't think we should be doing it, purely because we'd explained it to him. Yeah. But then he wanted to take part because his friends were taking part as well. But he went there knowing that I he is a Muslim. Okay, that, you know, music is this, okay, but because it's part of the school play and, you know, he's going to get extra credit at school for taking part in that, right, okay, for being creative, he went, all right. Afterwards, he goes, Daddy, I don't think I want to do that next year. Okay. But he made that decision himself. I didn't force it upon him. The thing that we've got to understand is that the way that we were brought up, yeah, it was very different. My dad had to look at me and I was shut up and sit down. Yes, Daddy. Yeah. Now we look at our kids, yeah, they'll start laughing. It's a different time. What did Imam Ali say? Bring your kids up, yeah? Don't bring your kids up in the same way that you are brought up. Because that's a different time. This is a different time. So in the same way, okay, the kids nowadays, we need to explain everything to them and trust in the fact that we've given them enough to make the right decision and guide them rather than saying, this is what you're doing. But you're kind of like blind following. See, I personally think it's a good idea to celebrate Christmas because of these things, like it nurtures your children, it gives time for bonding. However, to some extent, I think like where do we draw the line? Because are we picking up uh, like things that from other religions and applying it to our lives? To to what extent is that like actually allowed? We're copying other people. I think uh, my friend is here now, yeah? We're gonna gonna ask him all these questions, yeah? That we've got, all right? Trust me, you guys are gonna love him. Sheikh, Salaam Alaikum. So good to see you. Not bad. How are you doing? You okay? Brilliant. Please, Bismillah, come through. Um, all of the boys are really uh, waiting in anticipation for you. Please, Bismillah. Salaam Alaikum. Oh, hello. Salaam Alaikum. Please have a seat. So, guys, remember I told you that a very special person is coming? Sheikh Ali Hussein Datu. Yeah? So, inshallah, hopefully we can ask him all of the questions that we've got and he will tell us what's right and what we should be doing, you know? So, Sheikh, basically, we've been sat here and we've been talking a lot uh, about a lot of different things, but mainly about Christmas. And obviously, being Muslims, okay, the one main question that we've got is should we be celebrating Christmas as Muslims? Now, the funny thing is, right, okay, we, we kind of all, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but we kind of all agree on a lot of points but disagree on probably as many points as well right i mean look you can clearly see for the first time in my life i put up a christmas tree you know i've never done it before but i wanted to see what it's like and my friend over here is pretty upset with me about that i think it's taking a step too far if that makes sense what do you think you think it's wrong to put up a christmas tree yeah i I think okay so i think 
the fuck when you said that it sounds so weird. <laughs> okay, fine. So um I think there's a um there's a Christmas as a concept, for instance. So you can celebrate it, there's no wrong in it, as long as you don't validate someone's religion, which is fine. But behind each and everything that you do for Christmas towards your children, for instance, giving out presents is a sign of happiness or a sign of sort of um, giving out gifts, for instance. Same thing with Christmas dinner. There's a concept behind it. Christmas dinner brings in unity within the family. It celebrates, which is good, I think, good for uniting and good for Islam, etc. But then having a Christmas tree, I think, is like stepping over that specific line where I think you're kind of like, there's no concept behind it. It's just more work for you in terms of cleaning, for instance, and you're wasting so much food and whatnot. But that's about it. If we look at it from a couple of perspectives, firstly, if we look at it from the boundary that we have. As Muslims, obviously, we have a God-given boundary. It's not a man-made boundary. It's a boundary dictated by God or a boundary that we're trying to extrapolate from Quran, Hadith, regarding what God wants from us. We look at it from that perspective, number one. And secondly, we can look at it from a cultural perspective that we're born in England, we're Muslims, we're British. Should we engage with British celebrations as well? <clears throat> with regards to the Sharia, firstly, in as, as a tree, there's nothing wrong with putting up a tree and having a celebration at home. That's fine, right? So we agreed with that. Yeah. All agreed? So I can have a tree. So you can have a tree. <laughs> fine. All right. But then the intention behind the tree, is it in order to validate, like you said, a different opinion, a different religion, a different ideology? That, that's very subjective. Yeah. The reason why you put up a tree is totally up to you. If you put it up simply because there's a celebration which is going on in the entire nation, you want to partake in it as well. You want your children to feel the same happiness as other children feel. So you put up a tree, but it's a very important that you make it clear to your family members, to your children, that this tree has absolutely nothing to do with rubber stamping a different ideology. It's just a celebration we're having. The celebration is regarding the birth of Prophet Isa. So we make it Islamic as much as possible, that he's our prophet as well. He's a prophet who's alive and we're celebrating his birth. Yes, his birth may not have been on the 25th of December, but we don't know when it was. So we'll celebrate it on the 25th of December. That's not a problem. But Sheikh, correct me if I'm wrong. The tree itself symbolizes something that we do not believe in. It's not even from Christianity, it's from yeah. paganism. No, it's, not. it's rooted from paganism. It's actually been developed by Coca Cola. Santa Claus, Christmas tree, the North Pole, you know, <laughs> a snow. That's basically where it comes from. We have to look at whether or not people still put the tree and make a relation with a different ideology. Mm -hmm. There are many things that we do in our culture. We have different cultures. We have a, a Iraqi culture, Iranian culture, Pakistani, Indian culture, all these different cultures. If we start looking at the traditions we hold in the way we commemorate Imam Hussein, in the way we celebrate, there will always be things that we've taken and adapted from other cultures, mm -hmm. but we've cut off the relationship that that symbol has with how it was initially brought about. So one may argue that the tree came from a different you know, pagan religion. But today, when somebody thinks about putting up a Christmas tree, there is absolutely no relation between the tree and idol worshipping yeah. or paganism. So if you put up a tree and you make it clear to your children that we're just going to celebrate the same celebration that everyone else is doing in the country. We're celebrating the birth of Isa, for example, of Prophet Isa. And we have to make it clear, very clear, that the ide ideology that some hold regarding Prophet Isa is not the ideology we hold. With regards to the Trinity, with regards to him being the son of God as is claimed by others, that's our red line. That this is our Sharia, we will celebrate so long as it falls within the Sharia. As soon as it takes a step out, that's where we cut it off. And that's where we will be quite vocal and unapologetic in saying that we do not believe he was a son of God. We believe him to be a prophet, we respect him and today we're going to celebrate his birth. So could the same be said for giving and receiving presents as well? So that's even going a step further in respecting one's neighbors and friends and family. <laughs> I think so, we've touched okay. the sensitive point here, right? So, okay, so. But again, the reason has yeah. to be clear. Okay, my neighbors are celebrating Christmas. They're celebrating whatever they're celebrating, the reason behind Christmas. The majority of people today, when they celebrate Christmas, it's because it's a national holiday and we're celebrating as a country together. Yeah. Yeah. When you go and gift your neighbor, the amount of emphasis that has been placed in our traditions about respecting one's neighbors, about fulfilling their rights, is so great that Imam Ali salam says that we thought that the neighbors were going to be part of the inheritance. That's how much emphasis was being placed upon them by the Holy Prophet paraphrasing the tradition. So when you go next door and you do gift, whether it's a box of chocolates or toys, whatever it may be to your neighbors, 
and you wish them. You don't have to if you have a problem in saying Merry Christmas or Happy Christmas, whatever it may be. You can just wish them season greetings or even better go a step further and mention in a card that today we celebrate together. For example, to say, today we celebrate Prophet Isa really? or Jesus together. Really? However they're celebrating, they're celebrating. With regards to us, I'm the one giving the gift. So I'm in the driving seat here. Mm -hmm. I can say what I'm celebrating and why I'm gifting it to you. I'm celebrating the birth of Jesus that you and I accept and write a hadith of Prophet Isa, something that will be accepted by all and gifted to them as a gift. This would be highly encouraged. We're staying within the fold of the Sharia and on the other section, the second point we, we said, we're still making sure that we're one with our society and culture that's prevalent around us. So Sheikh, I completely agree with what you've said. But in real life, it's not that simple because yes, as a family, you may celebrate as a holiday with your neighbors, you may celebrate a as a holiday. But when you go to university, when you're at work, especially when you work as a young professional, you're invited to places and you're expected to do certain things. I'm not necessarily talking about drinking, but just the general culture that we have in celebrating Christmas. As a Muslim, can I join celebrating Christmas? So, so as in, do you mean like, Going to an office Christmas party or something like that. Yeah, yeah, for example. Okay. Like like a Christmas buffet kind of thing we were talking about earlier. <clears throat> okay, so now we've changed the scenario totally. First, we were speaking about our, our homes yeah. where we were in control of the situation and the environment and what takes place. We are in control of what tree goes up, what decorations are put. Mm -hmm. There's nobody on a cross on that tree. That we can control. Mm -hmm. Now we're changing it's the star. scenario. Before you say anything, sorry, Sheikh, it's actually a star. Yeah, definitely. I, Sheikh, we know so what doesn't like. that validate it? Doesn't that star, for instance, validate it? When you, again, we have to look at... It has to validate it. It has to validate it. Even if a non... No. If a, I think if a non-Muslim walks... Okay, for your children, for instance, you can make it clear. But when a non-Muslim comes in and sees that, he's going to think, oh yeah, so you celebrate Christmas. And that's your prime opportunity to yeah. decipher you and make like the difference. Idea. No, I don't. No, so, see, so, so that's not the correct way to speak to a normal Muslim, not, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, 100%, 100%. somebody comes in and says that you're celebrating yeah, Christmas, well. and you say no, no. you're not. <laughs> we, do it for the decoration. Yeah. That's the prime opportunity to make it clear yeah. that as proud Muslims who are born in Britain, we partake in the national celebration as well. You know, this is for our kids and our kids are happy on this day. They see other kids having presents on the same day. So why should we leave our kids out? But with regards to Prophet Esau or Jesus himself, we do not believe he was crucified. We do not believe necessary that he was born on this day. And Christians themselves differ. You have 7th of January and 25th December between different sects within Christianity yeah. as well. And so long as we are not ex externally showing that yes, we accept Jesus was crucified without a cross. We've got a star. We've got we've got different. We can put a moon at the top. If you want yeah. to put a moon, let's change it and put a moon instead. Okay. But it, it's so long as we do not validate the different ideologies. Yeah, yeah. well, so you'll have Christmas a Christmas tree this year? No, I inshallah will probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably Maybe if it doesn't too much not too much bugs come into the house, why not? Doesn't that, it can be an artificial tree. Have you got children? No, no, no. Okay, no, so as soon as you have children, and as a, <laughs> you'll be able to understand the pressure that your children are put under. And that's when you begin to realize that you have to make the boundaries clear for your children so that they're not ostracized or isolated from society, from their class as well, from their peers. Yeah. They can integrate. We're, we're, we don't, you know, this question to say that how should we integrate? We are integrated. We're an integral part of the society. We're born in this country. We don't have to integrate into the country, we're already a furniture of this country yeah, itself. Yeah. We may be questioned with regards to certain actions of different groups within this country. So for example, the Christian holiday, which is prevalent because we're in a Christian country. Do we have to integrate into that celebration, but not integrate as people who are British, we are British. Integrate into that celebration and this is when we make the lines clear for our children, allow them and make it clear what they can do and make it clear to them what we don't believe in and what we shouldn't do. So what if your child turns around to you and says, well, Christmas is way more fun than Eid uh, and then they want to make Eid just like Christmas and we're now adopting um, concepts. concepts and cultures and even practices from other religions to our own religion to beautify our religion. What do you have to say about that? So, I think you need to I think you need to explain this one. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so you have uh, perfect uh, example. I was mentioning earlier how uh, growing up uh, we had this little not like a joke but a kind of serious side to it that um, on Eid day Papa Eid would come 
<laughs> and in the same sense that Santa Claus comes and eats your milk and cookies and then leaves a gift, Papa Eid will come and eat your biryani, etc. and leave some <laughs> gifts or Eid in also. So it's kind of, yes, it's adopted from the idea of Santa Claus, but it's kind of different completely. What are your thoughts on that? Whenever we're about to adopt any type of action into our culture, so we're not adopting this into our religion. We have to, we have to make that very clear. Yeah, yeah, okay, we're not bringing something into the religion or saying that this is now an action that should be encouraged with all Muslims around. It's something we're adopting into our culture. If we were living in another country which didn't celebrate Christmas, we probably wouldn't even be having this discussion. With regards to adopting something into our culture, we have to make sure that everything we do has a benefit to it. You know, putting milk and cookies, all the types of food, and then telling the children that it was eaten, there's, there's no benefit to that. There's a benefit to the celebration. There's a benefit of bringing a smile on people's faces, of gifting ourselves, our children, our family members. That's fine. But with regards to these particularities of food being eaten, somebody coming down the chimney, there's no benefit to that. But I think like the, the symbolism that was trying to be shown is that Eid is as exciting as Christmas. Like, for example, the kids who do celebrate Christmas are always looking forward to the end of the year. Have they been good? Are they going to get presents or not? Whereas our children might not be thinking in that same sense. They don't have that uh, event to look forward to. Like Eid al-Fitr celebrates the end of Ramadan. Like they don't have as much excitement than they do about Christmas, especially given that at school, they're at, they're at school five days a week and Christmas is thrown down their throats come December. Mm. Whereas we don't do that about Eid in that same sense. So who do we have to blame for that? Ourselves. I was just thinking as he was saying that that's not... Yeah, but to be honest with you, I, I can understand that, yes, we are to blame as well, but we're also subjective, subjected to the environment that we're in as well, though. Don't forget, I mean, on Eid, right, okay, there are how many different days of Eid, as we discussed beforehand, right? Secondly, yeah, how many people can actually physically get time off work to on Eid day, you know, to go and celebrate with the families? And when they even do get time off, what do you do? Go to mosque, pray namaz, come back, maybe eat and have some people come over. It's pretty much like another normal day. Surrounding us, right, we don't have that. I mean, I was telling these guys that I went to Mashhad uh, on uh, uh, Eid al-Gadir. And, Sheikh, the whole place was lit up, like lights everywhere, like it was Christmas. But because we were in an Islamic country. I mean, if you go to Pakistan, right, the night before Eid, the day of Eid, it's so exciting because we're in a Muslim country. So we're not in a Muslim country. Eid kind of, in my personal opinion, does take a bit of a backseat to the national holidays like Christmas. So is it so wrong if in today's day and age, we're for the greater good or just to get the kids excited, trying something new to get them in the mood? So I still come back to the same point that I think we're to blame. We've made our culture, not our religion, but our culture, a culture of grief. That when we grieve, yeah. we're at the height and the climax of grief. We know how to grieve. We will have our masajid and our centers donned in black. Yeah. From the time you enter, you know that there's a certain state of grief or an action of grief going on in this mosque. Come the day of Eid or the day of Juma, for example, you can go in and come out and you wouldn't know. Is this a celebratory day or not yeah, true, at times? True. Right? Like you said, on the day of Eid, what, what do we see different in the mosque? Apart from going in the morning and praying or we'll shake each other's hands, do we see anything different? Are the mosques decorated? Are there, for example, an ashid being played? Do we yeah. have stalls outside for the kids to enjoy? The main emphasis here is about kids. Yeah. That the kids should realize that it's something different. They should be looking forward to it. <clears throat> Many a times on the Prophet's will are there as well. Some of our mosques are pretty much the same as they were yeah. on a normal day. Yeah. But if we start decorating the mosques, if we start having stalls for the kids, if we start having games for the kids, if we have a long weekend celebration for the Prophet's will, this is the greatest man who walked on the earth yeah. and we're going to give him one day, why don't we have a weekend celebration? Why don't we take the kids somewhere? Or why don't we do something at the mosque that will bring about that joyous um, state in people? Same for Eid. If we, if we can't do it on a weekday, like you correctly said, many people may not be able to get a day off. So then let's do it on a weekend. The first weekend that comes after Eid, let's have a weekend celebration in our mosque. Let's make it different. On, you know, climbing up to the day of Eid, approaching the day of Eid, you talked about how the environment is a catalyst yeah. for bringing about the excitement for Christmas. 30 days we're going to the mosque before Eid. So let's start making a celebratory day. Yes, the last few days, uh, day, days of grief because of the Shahada of uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam. Aside from those days, we can still have a build up to the day of Eid. What are we going to do on the day of Eid? We can start speaking to each other. We can have these games and raffles and things going on in our mosques yeah. as well.
decorate our houses. Decorate our house. And yeah. it's up to the parents now to change that day of Eid and to make it a day that the kids will look forward to. You can, for example, take presents and put it near your chimney as well. There's nothing wrong. Or hide it under their beds. Or, you know, bring about some sort of treasure hunt in the house for them. That's fine. When they come back from Eid Salah, it shouldn't just be that you have Eid breakfast, family come over, it's a boring day for the kids. Yeah. Take them out, buy them presents, you know. Have a good time. Let them be uh, joyous and let them look forward towards that day. He's making it sound so easy. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you at? <laughs> <laughs> no, so, yeah, go on. What might not be easy though is your question. Coming back Christmas to the parties. different scenario. Yes, sure. Okay, so now, we're, like, we're, like we said, we were speaking about a controlled environment where we were in charge. Mm. Now we're speaking about an environment where we are not in charge of what's going on around us. Mm. Yeah. So again, f the first thing we must always ask ourselves is the boundaries of God. Mm. Okay, what is the Sharia? What does God tell us? What are our red lines? And we need to ensure we don't cross them. And as a precaution, we should try and stay away from them as well. Not get too close to them because it's easy to slip when you get close to uh, the edge. When we're invited by our colleagues or by our, our employ, employers to come to a Christmas party, or if we as employers, maybe we arrange a Christmas party, we're in control there. We can say what can happen and what can't. But we, if we're invited to a Christmas party, we have two options. Either we're going to go or we don't. If every Muslim in that company, unless there's, let's say there's quite a few, if there are quite a few Muslims don't attend that party, then all of a sudden it's a big statement that the Muslims aren't attending. That can be taken in two ways. E either the Muslims are just rejecting mm. our celebration, they're not integrating, they're not trying to become part of the culture in the, the business, or people may not notice it. If it's one Muslim in the company, yeah. it doesn't go, people won't bat an eyelid. Mm. Let's say we want to go. Let's say we want to make an impact. We want to show that you know we're Muslims and we're also going to celebrate the birth of Isa. We want to make it clear. We have to realize when we go into this environment, what's going to be there? Most likely there'll be alcohol, yep. most likely there'll be food which is impermissible for us to eat and most likely there'll be music, there'll be the opposite gender who may not be dressed in an appropriate manner, there'll be interactions which may not be appropriate. These are our red lines. So even if we go, we should know, okay, what's on the agenda? Maybe there's an award ceremony first for the best employee of the, of the year. We stay for that part. When it comes to a raffle, we can stay there. And if we, let's say we win a raffle and we go up and we hand it you know, a, a bottle of alcohol, that's our prime opportunity to say that as Muslims we don't drink, so I won't be able to accept this gift. Now all of a sudden we're saying that, look, we are going to partake, but we have our lines. Yep. This is our line. I respect you and most surely you're going to respect me as well. And your gift will automatically be changed. When the time comes for a music party, that's when we can say that now we're going to take your leave because we don't listen to music in this manner, we don't dance, whatever it may be. When alcohol is being served, we can make it very clear that we're happy to attend, but just ensure that our table doesn't have any alcohol on it. So the after party is a no-go. It's <laughs> 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 not really, really disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. But see, that's what I was saying to you earlier as well. Just like, go have the dinner and when it's time for the after party, so The dinner is probably going to be quite problematic as well. Yeah. With the type of food that's being served, it's yeah. going to be very problematic for yeah. us to go to the same table if people are using their hands or the same spoons or spatulas to take different food. Again, we can make it very clear yeah. that, look, we only eat halal food, not food which may be cross-contaminated with haram food. Mm -hmm. So as much as our boundary and religion allows, I shall be with you and celebrate your celebration and uh, my celebration, the day of the birth of Prophet Isa. But as soon as the boundaries come about, yeah. And as soon as the music starts or the alcohol starts getting passed around, that's when I'm going to take your leave and make it clear in an unapologetic fashion. We don't have to apologize for the boundaries that we uphold. This is a moral boundary. If you look at how much the NHS is being plagued because of people drinking alcohol and the amount of beds people who are alcoholic take up from mental health perspective as well as within hospitals, it's very clear that it's an immoral action, especially when people begin to go uh, in an extreme, and that's why our religion has forbidden it. Premarital relationship or extramarital relationships, how do they begin? It begin by, begins by two genders mixing without any boundaries, hence we have a clear boundary. Mm -hmm. Haram food, we have a particular method of obeying our Lord in when food is permissible and that which isn't because we believe it has an effect on us. So we can make it very clear in a very polite and respectful manner and more surely because we live in a country where everybody is respected, our rights will be respected and we'll respect others as well. I have another question. Sure. So, for example, if I was to go to my neighbor's house and, you know, bake them a nice cake and whatever, and then I say... Do you bake cakes? 
I'll invite you sometime, inshallah. He's talented. He's talented. So, so say for example, I, I explained to them that I also celebrate the birthday of Prophet um, Isa alayhi salam, uh, and then we have something in common. But then we come to the conclusion that it's not actually his birthday. What if this is just a proposition? What if we were to actually celebrate the birthday of Prophet Isa alayhi salam um, on his actual birthday? Um, why don't we do that? Because from my understanding, we only celebrate the birthdays of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Imams. Can you imagine if we had 124,000 celebrations <laughs> and death days? Fair point. Okay. <laughs> Firstly, we don't know the 124,000 prophets. And, we don't, and therefore, obviously, we don't know the days they were born or the day they But if we away. really wanted to propagate that message that it's also our Nabi, then surely we should uh, perhaps celebrate it as well as, because we already have so many other celebrations. Why not celebrate Nabi Sadeh Sam as well? If we start celebrating on another day, yeah. we're already causing some sort of division within the larger, larger society. Yeah. Instead, why don't we focus on the day of the Prophet's birth, our Prophet, that we already know when he was born. Yeah. And let's make that a great event. Such a great event that it goes into schools as well. Yeah. That we go to schools and we say, as a, you, know, you can be on the board of the PTO, the, you know, the governors on the board. You can go and say as a parent that I'd like for us as a school to have an assembly on this particular day about the Prophet Muhammad. And if they can't find anyone to speak, then as a parent, you volunteer, then I'll speak. You're speaking to children, speak to them about the characteristics of our Holy Prophet. Let it move into society that this is the day the Prophet was born. You look at different campaigns that take place. Okay, it's going to be more expensive, but people put up billboards as well. Yeah. So around the, around the entire world, we could ensure that people know that today is the day the Holy Prophet was born. Coming back to your point, we're good at doing that for Hose Hussain. Why don't we do it as a celebratory thing as well? Correct. But again, the onus is on our shoulders. We can't point fingers at somebody else and say, why aren't you doing it? Yeah. If we have the idea, let's do it. There was a group of three, four, five people who wanted to bring about Imam Hussain's mission globally and ended up in this charity mm -hmm. who was saying, Let's have another group of few people yeah. who now have that aspiration to make the Prophet known to mankind. He was a mercy to mankind. Yeah. So let's not do injustice to him. Let's go and tell the whole world about it. He wasn't just for us. He wasn't a prophet for us that we have to keep for ourselves. Yeah. His teachings can be accepted and acted upon by anybody. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead. Let's take the first step and let's start yeah. letting the people of the world know about Muhammad So, um, the, uh, the Imam Hussein the same thing about um, being able to control your own environment, which is fine, I 100% agree with that. And coming on to the external not being able to control. So let's say a Muslim would marry a non-Muslim, for instance, um, who is part of a family of Catholic, for instance. So a, Mus a Shia Muslim married, or a Muslim married a Catholic person, per se, and then they celebrate Christmas. Where does that line draw for that person's spouse's you know, whose family is Christian or whatever. So how do you then, like, you can't control the fact, does this rule same apply in terms of, because you're talking about validating now, right? So you, if I married, for instance, a non-Muslim, and my non-Muslim's family celebrates Christmas, where does my line draw in terms of my spouse celebrating Christmas, for instance, or spouse's family celebrating Christmas? How do I make that clear for them? Or, or what does it mean? Not getting into the um, jurisprudence of yeah. marrying a non-Muslim. That put aside. <laughs> Let us say this marriage has taken place. How do we respect one another's cultures? Now, this is obviously a discussion that is definitely going to be had well before people get married of different of faiths, course. let alone cultures. That when we have children, are they going to be brought up as Muslims? Are they going to be brought up as Christians? Are they going to be given Muslim names, Islamic names as such? Are they going to be given yeah. Christian names? How are we going to bring these children up? Are they, is the late girl going to wear the hijab? Is she not going to wear the hijab? These are very difficult questions to tackle with and they probably would have been tackled with prior to such a marriage taking place. If such a marriage has taken place, then naturally we have to respect one another. On the day of Eid, one would expect the spouse, let's say, for example, let's say a Muslim man was to marry a, a Christian woman, as you mentioned. One would expect that the Christian woman would celebrate the day of Eid with her boundaries if she has. That the Muslim man would celebrate the day of Christmas with the boundaries that he has. And again, making the boundaries very clear without being unapologetic, so without being apologetic. The rules still apply, exactly. Right. I think the more difficult scenario would be is if a young, let's say a child, a son, converted to Islam. And now his entire family, meaning his yeah. parents as well, are Christians. 
and they're celebrating Christmas. Does the son, out of the respect that he holds for the parents, does he have a duty to now, you know, be part of that environment in all aspects? Is he allowed to come out of that environment and cause a certain discomfort to his parents? Again, the discomfort and the displeasure of God comes before anybody else's displeasure. So long as God is pleased, then we try and please everybody else after that. But the first pleasure that has to be our goal is the pleasure of God. So even that young child who respects his parents to a great level and puts them on a pedestal like Islam says, even if they're not Muslims, he has to ensure, she has to ensure that as soon as alcohol comes about, as soon as music comes about, as soon as social you know, interactions which go against his beliefs or her beliefs comes about, that's where he draws the line. And he speaks in a very respectful, polite manner, tells his family what his restrictions are. And I think nine times out of ten, the family would respect that as well. And even if he was to leave that engagement, they wouldn't feel so offended because he's spoken about it. But if we just turn around and say, I'm a Muslim, I can't celebrate Christmas and I walk out the door, that gives a very bad I think impression. It's a matter of the way you say it as well. Correct. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's pretty much uh, got well, us a lot of questions. Now, so yeah. I guess like the bottom line here yeah. is, should we celebrate Christmas or not? Simple as yes or no. Is there a yes or no? I wish there was a yes and no. <laughs> there is Life isn't that area. simple, is it? <laughs> There's no yes and no. <laughs> the way I see is the way you've concluded it is as long as it brings benefit. If there is a benefit behind the action of it, then why not? Yeah. yeah. But if it's, it's to do benefit. like, for instance, having the cookie and being eaten, eaten by, you know, Papa Eid or whatever, then there's no action behind it. <laughs> but there's no concept behind it. It doesn't benefit you. Because no, Papa yeah. Eid has got you, hasn't but from it? But from what I understand, yeah, it's <laughs> like, um, as a Muslim, it's okay to celebrate Christmas, but you have to have your line, like, but yeah. it's all about intention. Yeah. It's about intention, but there's an ideology the line for the ideology that's there and then you've got your sharia as well in terms of ideology we have to make it very clear that the trinity is not part of our religion that jesus being the son of god is not part of our religion in actual fact the quran is very clear in admonishing those individuals who call for the trinity or say that jesus is the son of god and allah in surah maryam speaks about how the skies will could would burst or the mountains would crumble because of this uh, this very strong statement which goes against the basic tenet of our faith which is Tawheed. So we'll make it very clear that we're in no way rubber stamping Trinity or that Jesus is the Son of God. To the contrary, we believe that he was a prophet born of a miracle, that he didn't have a father and his mother gave birth to him. So we have that light and we make it clear to our family and if need be to people around us as well. That's the ideology. In terms of the celebration, that's what we hold the Sharia. That we can have a tree, we explain it to the children, that's fine. Um, we can celebrate and give gifts to the neighbors and people around us, that's recommended. And I think what else, the other thing we can conclude from our discussion is that we now have a responsibility to bring about the same excitement that our children have for Christmas for our own celebrations, including Eid, including the Wilada of the Holy Prophet, Eid Khadir, and these other great celebrations that we have in our calendar. Sheikh. Sure. Man, honestly, thank you. You smashed it here. My pleasure. Yeah, I think uh, we've converted you back, right? Converted. Yeah, definitely. You don't yeah. have to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna go out and buy a tree right now. You definitely. know, set it right 100%. up. You know? No, but thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. I think what we need to do now, as part of the Christmas celebration, is eat food. Mm. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Yeah, that's alright. Oh, but if you don't celebrate Christmas, you don't have to eat. You don't worry. <laughs> no, 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 it's allowed. Okay, give me your share. Let's, let's <laughs> go. Good. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go have some food. Bismillah.